and talk about electromagnetic radiation, the beginning of Chapter 4. First of all, a wave consists of a few things. You have this, which looks like a wave. We have a wavelength from crest to crest. It's called a wavelength. The top of the wave is called the crest, as I said. The amplitude here is the distance from the middle of the wave to the top, to the crest. And then the bottom of the wave is called the trough. An electromagnetic wave is a wave where there's an electric field and a perpendicular magnetic field in which the wavelength of both of those fields are the same as they travel. Now, those wavelengths can change size. As a wavelength becomes longer, like this one on top, this is a long wavelength, or lambda. Lambda is a symbol for wavelength in science. This one has a shorter wavelength. And what happens is when there's a longer wavelength, it is lower in energy, NRG, lower in energy. So this is higher energy when there is a shorter wavelength. And if you can imagine these waves moving through a point, if they're moving to the left, for instance, say both these waves are moving to the left at the same speed, because electromagnetic radiation all moves at the same speed, the speed of light. If all these are moving to the left at the same speed, how many crests would pass this point per second? There would be less crests passing um, in wave A per second than in wave B. If you look at how many would go be going through, because they'd be moving at the same speed. And what that is, when how many crests moving per second is the frequency of a wave. So this would have a lower energy and frequency. So energy and frequency go together for a wave, and they're the opposite of the wavelength. Low energy and frequency, long wavelength. High energy, short wavelength. This would also be and high frequency for this wave. So we can compare waves just by looking at them, which one has longer and which one has shorter waves, and can look at how their energies must compare because of that. With anything in chemistry, there is mass a lot of times that goes with it. So here's an equation that will tell us how the wavelength and frequency are related math-wise. So we have C, which is the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Put that in perspective. You want to talk about miles. It's 186,000 miles per second. So 7 times around the Earth, more than that, more than 7 times around the Earth per second. That's the speed of light. So all electromagnetic radiation moves at this speed. Not just visible light, all electromagnetic radiation. Wavelength. This lambda symbol, it's a Greek letter, is in meters to make this equation work. And the frequency is measured in, in hertz. In other words, how many waves per second, just like the previous slide showed, um, how many waves would pass a point per second. If we said that the frequency was 3 hertz, that would be 3 waves per second past a certain point. So let's look at how we can use that equation to figure out one or the other. Since the V is always the same thing, if we have lambda, we can figure out frequency. If we have frequency, we can figure out lambda. So here's a couple of problems like that. So if I want to know the wavelength of 103.7 megahertz radio waves, all right, so I can use my original equation. And I'm going to rearrange that for wavelength, or lambda. So to get lambda by itself, I'm going to decide bo divide both sides by nu. That's another Greek letter. It looks just like a V, but kind of fancy. 
And if I do that, that gives me lambda, which equals p over nu. p is always 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Nu is my frequency. That's 103.7 mega, which is six spots over to the left of hertz. So it's six powers of 10 bigger than hertz times 10 to the 6th hertz. Or hertz is also known as a second to the negative 1, waves to the, per second. So those will cancel out with seconds, and my answer will be in meters. What I would like you to do is copy this down, and with your calculator, plug that in. I know that the 103.7 times 10 to the 6 is not in correct scientific notation, but you can still plug that into your calculator, and it will work. So this is a radio wave that you'd collect and listen to the power loon. That would be the radio wave. So the question is, what is the wavelength? For red laser light, it has says on there that the wavelength is 635 nanometers. Pretty small. Remember, nano is times 10 to the negative ninth compared to a regular meter. So again, I can start with my original equation. And now I'm going to solve for frequency. I'm going to do that by dividing both sides by wavelength. That cancels. And my frequency equals C over lambda. Again, my speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. I'm going to divide that by wavelength, 635 nanometers, but I need that to be in meters for this equation to work. So it's going to be times 10 to the negative 9th meters. The meters will cancel, and I'll end up getting an answer in seconds to the negative 1, which are also known as hertz. So I want you to solve for that problem. Again, in your calculator, you can just go 3e to the 8th divided by 635e negative 9, and you'll get your answer in how, how many waves pass a point per second with red laser light. That's what that answer will tell you, how many waves pass a point per second with red laser light. If we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, there's a wide, wide range of lengths as you look at it. So we have 10 to the 6th for a wavelength in meters, which is like the size of Mount Everest, or the height of skyscrapers, all the way down to the height of humans, fingernails, and then we get to the smallest thing, which is times 10 to the 8th, negative 18th, very, very small. And that is the highest energy waves. These are the lowest energy waves. These are the types of waves that would not hurt you. Radio in here is also microwaves. Infrared, which are just heat waves. We've got the visible waves, which our eyes can detect. We have ultraviolet, which which uh, gives us burns and suntans. We have x-rays, which helps us to see if we have breaks in our bones. And then we have gamma rays. So we have lots of waves a long range. Notice how these things that hit us all the time don't really hurt us. Here, with the higher energy waves, they became, become more and more damaging to our skin skin and DNA and can cause cancer. All right, if we look at this range real quick, we'll see radio waves, which are like the 103.7 megahertz that we measured before. That would be along that area. Microwaves are what are actually used in a microwave is somewhere in this range of the spectrum. It does not it only excites water molecules, and that's what causes microwaves to work. So there's a, there's a wave in this range somewhere that causes microwaves to excite water molecules and heats up our food. Infrared, which are just heat waves. I want to talk about visible real quick, because visible is broken up into Roy G. Buh -buh. The indigo was taken out. So lowest energy is red. Highest energy is, this is NRG. Highest energy is violet out of the whole, all, out of all the visible waves. Now, a really good analogy that I heard from the professor over at St. Cloud State is the whole idea of how much we can actually see. We can see very, very, very little of the electromagnetic spectrum. His analogy was super, and here it is. 
All right, so here's the analogy that Dr. Dvorak from St. Cloud State used from, from Mexico to Canada. I would hope I don't need to label these, but I'm going to. From this distance here is approximately 2,600 miles. That's the distance from Mexico to Canada, approximately. Out of that whole distance, if we took that and imagine that that is like the electromagnetic spectrum of all the waves that types of waves that exist, the amount that we could see, the amount that our the visible spectrum is, is one foot of that 2,600 miles. In other words, there is a lot of electro electromagnetic waves out there that our eyes cannot detect. We can only see a very, very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, but yet the things that we can see are pretty amazing in what we, our eyes can do every single day. So go ahead and uh, bring your note sheet to class tomorrow, and we'll work on this stuff a little more.